Welcome back to the show. My name's Charlie Burton, and today I'm interviewing an independent trader, Peter Apostolou. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Peter, let's get straight to it. Okay. How long have you been trading? 13 years. 13 years, so? 2003. Okay, tell us a little bit about your history. How did you get into trading? What was it that motivated you to get into trading? Okay. I think for many, many years, even when I was a teenager, I was fascinated by markets and uh, currencies and didn't do much investigation at the time because obviously I didn't have too much spare cash. But as time went on, I read a little bit more, looked at the economy, it started, started getting interested. And about 2003 was when I, for the first time, had a bit of spare capital or capital that I could use to actually invest in this way. And uh, I joined. City Index. Yep. Uh, got a got a manual from. Can I say his name? Yes, you Vince, can. Vince Stanzioni. Vince Stanzioni. Yeah. yeah. Uh, learned how to look at moving averages, and off yep. it went. Okay. I right. To make a fortune. And so you, I, I'm thinking Vince. So you probably read an advert in the Daily Mail yes, or something like that. Absolutely. Used to advertise That's in there. Exactly yeah. Okay. How I did it. Yeah. And uh, signed up. I got the manual. Read the manual. Really, really interested, and thought, yeah, I could, I could do some of this. I could give it a go. Um, and that really started a whole load of reading. I mean, I just spent ages reading and, and trying out um, strategies and you know, looking at different ways of doing things, losing a lot of money. Oh, um, hold on a second, hold on a second. <laughs> Let's just put, rewind a little bit. So losing a lot of, so, okay. What so, you said you're doing a lot of reading. Yes. What sort of read, what books, or, what sort of books were you reading at that time or was it? All, the, all the big or? books, all the big books, you know, the traders recommended such as uh, uh, the, the Diary of a Trader, um, things like Trading in the Zone. Yep. Okay. Um, I was, Michael, I'm, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah, I've been very, very big into the, the mental side, the psychology, the card psychology side of things. Um, and, I, and I read those books. Also, look at candlesticks and different different charting methods. And I started looking at technical stuff, um, and and I did very very well. You know, in the first year, uh, I actually I looked at trend trading by Michael Cove. That really impressed me. Okay. And I could see how if you got a trend, you could make a lot of money from it. Yep. And that's what inspired me at first. And I did exactly that. I think around about 2003, six seven months after I started, I could see. Well, I, 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 I thought that the American dollar was going to start going down, and I looked at which was the strongest currencies and things like the Aussie dollar and the New Zealand dollar because they were doing quite well at the time because of China's growth. So I just put a bet on um, the Aussie, the, the USD Aussie, and um, it just, it just, I just kept it for six months. I was down a few thousand to begin with and kept hold of it because I didn't know all about this stuff about you know you should look at your stops, you should look at the levels, yep. um, and I just went in. Every time it went up, because I spent about three months underwater. And then September, October, it started going up. And every time it went up, I put some more in. And then it went up, and I put some more in. Putting my stops in as well, so I wouldn't yep. lose my money. So in the end, I ended up something like thirty-five pounds a point, okay. and ended up with uh, twenty thousand pounds. Okay. Bank then what happened? Thousand. And then I gave it all away. Well, like you do, <laughs> what, <laughs> what most traders do. Because I thought I discovered the secret. Of course, of course. So okay, so uh, you made a lot of money in that six months, then lost it because yes. you got. Overconfident, absolutely, I'm assuming. Absolutely. Um, so, what then happened after that? Because, you know, the years have gone on since then. So, what happened in this since 2003 to, let's say, 2010? What was going on in that period? You learnt this stuff yep, initially. Yep. Um, made some money. Yep. Partly through luck, yep, like you say. Yep. Um, what happened after that? Well, I, I thought I'd found the answer, which was trend trading. Yep. So, every well, it time. It is the answer. Yeah, it is, but catching it and catching it right and knowing when yeah. to come out with the yeah. problems that I had. And I, I, I did, I had quite a few, quite a few trades after that, lots that I would really, really hold on to. Uh, and I would look for long term and try and get as many points as I could. Even sometimes looking at profits of, you know, uh, 15, 20,000 and not taking it off the table mm. because I thought there was still, there was still more to go. Yeah. And then of course, the markets would turn. And then I'd go back down. I wouldn't. I wouldn't make as much, or I'd even lose money in some of the instances as well, because I really thought this is the trend. That's the way it's going. I think you mentioned it. Talked about getting married to a position, mm. you know, and you do. You get to these positions, and you really think it's going to work, and that's what happened. And that that sort of epitomised my training over the next few years. In about 2005, 2006, I went on a course with Knowledge Knowledge to Action. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, We're doing a lot of pr promotion. I didn't mean these external companies. Like, no, no, no. It's I didn't mean to swear. Honestly. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely fine. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. was great. Yep. I learned a lot. Met a lot of people. Yep. And in fact, it was people I met on that training who actually directed me to Easy Trader. 
Okay. And that was the biggest, I think that was the biggest benefit I got from that course. Not okay. saying it, was, it wasn't any good, because there were a lot of good things there as well. Right. Um, only what I decided was that, 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 that sh trading in shares wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay. You know? yeah. um, and then I got onto Easy Trader and I followed your videos for years and years and years before I actually did anything, learned quite a lot, still kept making the same mistakes. Um, Didn't you say you had an Achilles heel when it came to making mistakes? What was your uh, Achilles heel? My Achilles heel is, yeah, well, um, I, if I mention one trade which will, which will completely tell you that is, that's basically that uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't put my stops in sometimes. I know. No, I, no, now I do. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> that was a long silence there. I yeah, had to no. exaggerate this. But no, yeah, okay. No, so you do now? I do now, absolutely. Okay. Every, but you did. every No, I didn't. Right. I did. I used to think um, that it's okay if I watch what's going on. I'll put my stop on at the right <laughs> yeah. time. I'll come out at the right time. The only trouble is it goes a little bit more. You think, yeah, but I still think it's going to go up or down, whichever, depending on which way. I know. And, you, and you hold on and you hold on. And you just get to a point where you can't stretch yourself out and any more, and the money goes. It's a, cons it's a it's a it's a mistake made by so many traders. Absolutely. All of the time they do it all of the time. But the worst thing is, I've done very very well. You know, I've had periods where I've, I've you know slowly 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 built up. I mean, I've gone from yep. um, five hundred pounds to eight thousand pounds, and then given it all away because I forgot to put I didn't or I didn't put a stop on one instance. Yep. I've actually made it, it, with one one trade which I stalked for quite a while, which was gold trade. This is going back, I think, uh, I can't remember now, maybe about uh, 10 years ago, but I was on gold. Gold was really doing really well, and I was watching it because it's, it come down and it stopped and it wasn't going very far and it was bouncing along, and I was convinced that it was gonna do another push up, and I watched it and watched it, and it did. It started pushing up, then I added more money in again, and then kept going up until I had something like 27,000 pounds in the kitty. Yep. But what I hadn't done, because it was, a, it, was a quick, it was a quick rise, I hadn't put my stops, hadn't folded, folded my, uh, moved my stops up. Yep. And so what happened is one Friday afternoon, I remember walking out, looking at my, looking at my account, thinking 27,000 pounds, whoa, get in, you know? And I went out, I was happy all day, and I thought, I'll come back later on, and then I might take some out, I might put my stops in as well, see what's happening. So I came back in Friday afternoon, about one o'clock, two o'clock, got into my account and I was just pondering, right, what should I do now? Should I take this out? And all of a sudden, it just dropped. It just went, it just started dropping, 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 dropping. I couldn't get in, I couldn't do anything. I had to watch 27,000 pounds turn into 5,000 pounds. Well, at least it was uh, still a profit. It was still a profit. But it, the pain of actually giving back, and a lot of traders have this, that it, it's actually a lot of the time more painful seeing a, uh, a big profitable position turn all the way back against you Absolutely. than actually getting into a trade and just getting stopped out almost immediately. Absolutely. I mean, I thought, I thought, well, look, you've made five thousand mm. pounds, but then I thought, yeah, but I've lost, I've lost yeah. twenty-two. Okay. Because of a silly mistake. Yeah. Okay. So you've made a lot of mistakes there. You've learned a huge amount. Yeah. Okay. So let's bring us to where we are right now. So uh, your current trading style. Um, discretionary. Briefly. Yes. Discretion. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I follow the trading room. I, I, I did the MBT, and I think that's, that's not going to mean anything to our audience. So just a general. Um, All right. Well, I, 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 I've I've gone onto a particular course, and what I generally do is try and is try and look at you know the moving averages and look at look at the the momentum as, as you point out. So you look so you look at moment, momentum yes. in price. Yes. And and you use some moving averages and some support and resistance. Yes. Keep absolutely. it simple. Absolutely. Great. I mean, okay. one thing I learned from that, one of the biggest things I learned, which I never used to use before, was highs and lows. Yeah, yeah, you know, when yeah. you hit a particular high, mm. you know, then it's, it might get, it might go a little bit higher. So I started bringing all this stuff into trade, and I've got to say, uh, I, I, what 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 got better was actually stock placement. Yeah. So risk management got a lot better because all of a sudden, I could now look for, for places where I wouldn't have to risk too much money. Whereas before, I'd look at something and say that's going up, and regardless of where it was, mm. I'd, I'd take the bet and maybe have a big stop. Now I can. I can I can take trades on you know 10 20 with 10 20 pips uh, risk and with a small account that I've got I can put a, you know a two three pounds a point and sometimes if you get the right move you can make a lot of money from it. Peter, I've got to stop you. That is great. So what you're talking about now, what you've learned is risk overall, using stop losses, and risk to reward is what you're talking about yes, there as well. I These am, are yes. some of the big things that yes. you've learned over the years. Yes, I have. We're practically out of time already, Peter. And <laughs> I feel like I could get another several minutes out of you, but um, unfortunately, time's right. up. Well, I just hope everything I've done helps other people. That's exactly. Um, just very quickly, any advice you can give to any of our, our viewers oh, out risk, here? Oh, risk, risk and reward. I mean, that's the yeah. most important. The most important thing, and the times when I've lost out, is when I failed to put the stops in and I haven't got out. Like you said, 
You know, you can always go back in again later on, but for yep. some reason, in the heat of the moment, you forget it. And I always think, put your stops in, leave your stops there, don't play around with them, um, and, and that's really the most important thing. Great stuff. Thank Peter Postelou, thanks very much for coming on the show. My name's Charlie Burton. Thanks for coming on to uh, and watching Tip TV Finance. We'll be back soon.